Hey everyone, um, I'm Paula, I'm uh, so Scrap News on Instagram and WordPress and I am terribly, terribly, terribly late doing an another video. Um, I've just looked on um, YouTube to see what my last video number was and I've got notes in my notebook that I did a number 10, you know, I've ticked everything off and been really good and it somehow disappeared. But I know there were some comments because... I had a um, pass a stash item and that went. So no idea what happened to that video. Never mind. So technically this is number 11. So yeah. So it's been a long time since July. I um, had an injury at a boot camp. I badly sprained my wrist. I stopped stitching for about seven, eight weeks. Um, didn't do a lot after that. Had to relearn two-handed method. Um, Everything else got in the way. My mother-in-law was really sick. I got sick again. Full of excuses. Full, tell you. Um, so, yeah, so let's catch up. Try and make this maybe a monthly thing for 2018. I've got plenty of plans. Some goals. Some realistic goals this year. You'd be pleased to see. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. So, um, what have we been doing? So it's summer here in New Zealand. Um, today's February the 2nd. We have just had Auckland Anniversary Week, which has been a great short week. Uh, next week is Waitangi Day, um, which is our national day. There's my bit of nationalism for today. Uh, these are the colours in Maori. And uh, when my husband's English cousins come to stay, they have to be able to stay this so that they can get their cup of coffee in the morning. It's great fun. Uh, so if it is, it's Ma Fero Kakariki Pangamano Kofa, yellow, my favourite, Pakaka Kikarangi Tarakaraka. So, colours. Learn something new every day. Uh, the kids and grandma went down to my sister in law's in Invercargill for three weeks. So, um, Simon, our eldest boy, we uh, gutted mother-in-law's living dining areas, um, so they uh, painted, like no, her lungs have a problem so she can't um, have anything toxic around her, no aerosols, no anything like that, so we took opportunity and we've put in a low um, emission paint, uh, she's got new carpet that's um, hypoallergenic, uh, new floorings, new everything basically, so, and new gardens, so tried to eliminate some stuff there as well so that was three weeks no stitching um i said one night off in three weeks we went to jimmy carr which is awesome i love jimmy carr uh, apologies if you don't um but i think his sense of humor is fantastic it's um crass and it's reverent and it is um more the english language sort of thing double meanings not dirty double meanings but he is he's very good so anyway, so the kids were away. Part of their trip was in Wanaka, beautiful lake in the South Island. Um, this is almost the view from my uncle's house, actually, which is really cool. And even in summer, the mountains still have snow on them. It is that cold down there, despite the fact that they were down at the lake the other day. Spoke to my aunt, 32 degrees, in between acupuncture appointments. She was going across the road and sitting in the lake to cool down. Uh, and from Invercargill to get to Wanaka, you have to go through Queenstown. And this bit here, it's called the Frankton Arm. And all the way up here was where my maternal grandparents retired. So I used to spend every summer. And this is just so built up compared to what it was when I was a child. <laughs> Which I guess is the same for everybody, right? When you, um, your childhood memories, everything's suddenly a lot smaller or a lot bigger than what it used to be. Um, and Mace, Louise and I went to Auckland Art Gallery and we caught the Corsini collection. Uh, this was fantastic. It was so awesome. It was a whole lot of artwork. Um, there were there was a tapestry, which is very, very cool. Um, wood panelling, oils, marble, um, cutlery, crockery, everything. All the stuff that they used to have in their old kitchens, everything. It's the first time this material has left Corsini collections in Florence and travelled anywhere and I believe it's now in Perth somewhere in Western Australia 
Yeah, I think it's there because there's some notes in here in, uh, from um, a curator in uh, the gallery there. Um, there's a couple of things like, this is Botticelli. This is beautiful in real life. It is so gorgeous. So vivid. The colours, everything. Like, this is not an enhanced coloration of whatsoever. Um, the other thing that Louise and I stopped and looked at, uh, this is Matteo Rossellini, The Triumph of David, painted in 1610. The painting itself isn't much bigger than this. This is not quite A4 <clears throat> in uh, New Zealand size and paper size. Um, and it was, it just drew you in. You know, we sat and looked at it and you could see more and more and more and more and more as you sat there. It was beautiful. Um, as part of it, they also had um, a, a bit about for, for children, so which was perfect for Mace because he's eight. And everywhere that they saw Arno, family dog named after the river, they there were questions for the children. Most of them were pretty appropriate, actually, for someone who'd be eight. But we ended up having a very interesting conversation at this painting. Can you see that? There are people hung, burning at the stake in the middle of that. One of the questions was, what do you think you would smell? What do you think you would hear? How do you think you would feel? Mm. I don't know about you, but that was a really awkward conversation to have in the middle of an art gallery. And fucking fantastic. Sorry, I shouldn't have sworn them. Um, but anyway, that that was that was great. Um, and yeah, and I've kept the book because I bought the book years ago and I bought um, some postcards too. Um, when I was a teenager, the um, Reader's Digest bought a whole lot of Renaissance art here as well. So I bought a couple of postcards which I will frame. It's a Corsini Villa. Giuseppe uh, Ganohi, Palazzo Corsini, circa 1744, hand coloured etching. That too was beautiful. Um, and yes, and this is the. Bocelli, Madonna and Child with Six Angels, circa 1500, tempera and oil on board. And yeah, that was beautiful. This angel here, where my finger is, little finger is, she had a tear on her face. And um, you'd swear that you could have reached out and touched it. It was just gorgeous. And then I bought some other postcards that were in the thing. Um, Mason bought some binnies there. Um, he's, he was a New Zealand artist and he was more kind of 1950s modern art and Mason bought um, a tui going over Bethel's Beach which is my favourite beach and another couple of birds and I didn't actually know he was interested in that sort of that sort of art so that was quite interesting seeing that wasn't interested in any of the other modern art wouldn't stay in those galleries um, very interested in some of the other stuff so um, that's a trip that we'll be doing again. Um, now this is Louise de Kitterell. She's the Duchess of Portsmouth. She was mistress. She was sent over from France to be the mistress of Charles II. And she survived. She, she had an amazing life. She thrived despite what I might consider to be her family's neglect. You know. um, yes, and this is owned by our art gallery. Which is cool. Cir uh, painting was circa 1670 by Henri Cascard. I think it was one of the ones that was done before she um, went there though because it kind of looks, well it looks very French in the background there doesn't it? So yeah that would be one that I frame. I've got her biography somewhere and it's just, it was fantastic. Um, can't remember who wrote it though. Sorry useless today right um i had some finishes and i got some things framed most of them were for christmas presents so some of them are not in my possession anymore um i had the 18 done for simon and this i've done without glass this is a clouds factory um it is on i forget now um it's one on one of Catherine's. i think it's called geyser country stitch geyser 28 count lugana um, Catherine is yeah country stitch fabrics and she's here in New Zealand she's a design um, designer and everything here um, in video 10 that disappeared 
I had done the Christmas Island Centre and I had changed out the seagull. Uh, I changed out the do whatever the bird is of Hawaii. I changed that out for the seagull um, and sent this chart off to Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, hey, sweetie. She sent me back this one in, in return and I've changed him out. So he's missing the bird and I changed this out to be a cup of coffee. So that was a, a FFO in December on my tree. Um, I FFO'd two of the Florence Santas, one for me and one for Louise, my daughter. She gets a couple every year. And I finished an FFO to Jamaica's. And again, she's got one. And I've got Verona and Genoa Santas and Barbados and Trinidad Santas to do this year. I've got the kits. When I get around to them, I'll get around to them. Um, because they would normally be my work projects. And I'm doing something else at work, which I'll show you shortly. And I finished Andromeda. And the chart, I'm sorry, has already gone off to Christine, my stitch from Stash Postcard Pal. But I got her framed. Apologies for the glare. That's a bit better, isn't it? And as you can see, changed out her face, some of the beads. So yeah, she normally sits in my office, so I haven't been seeing the, the Krynek constellation or anything like that yet. But I'm going to um, leave her at home for a few days, soon as today's Friday. And hopefully I'll get to see that tonight. Because I did use the glow in the dark. Because you do, don't you? Um, another finish was from something that was um, relatively new haul. Lizzie Kate. One of her coffee ones. This is Coffee Time, number 183. Um, I will pass the stash on this eventually, but I haven't stitched the other two yet. I grabbed some of Catherine's Lugana. Um, dyed it with coffee, as appropriate. And just use some of my Gentle Art sample threads, the ones that I'd used in my conversion for the Mia Mermaid, the Australian freebie from last year. And um, did that. And then I've got more than enough to do another one. And then I think I will cube finish them. You know, just something easy. and Or maybe even flat and hang them. That would actually be quite cool for my office door at work. Warning sign for people. Don't come in, don't come in. Um, and the round robins are still going. So this is Becker's. And in December, I stitched Rose of Sharon, Mirabilia design. And then in January, even though I didn't stitch for most of January, I finished out for her, because the last person didn't finish her, um, Ashley's Roses. She was about, well the top base was half done, half her hair was done, her skin was all done, her bodice, her bow and her skirt were done, so the rest of it I... Uh, sorry, her, bod her bow wasn't, her bodice, the belt part, and the skirt, and all the gaps there are going to be beads. She's quite pretty. But having done that, I probably won't do her for many years now. I am more inclined to do my own Sharon and to um, colour convert that. And then that's the piece as a whole. It's going off to Melinda, and she's doing one of the taller ones in the middle. Andrea did that one, and then one of the other girls has done um, this one here. So one of the girls in Facebook in the Round Robin group is wanting to start a mirror Round Robin this year. So if you're interested, um, look me up on Facebook. Uh, you'll see who I am because you can look up Paula King and you can see my um, Andromeda as my icon and tag me, message me, whatever and I'll get you into this other group if you're interested. So you have to be able to commit to it. It's going to take you about a year and a half for your things to get around the place. It may not be just in the States. For example, ours is in Scotland and two people in New Zealand and three people in, Australia, in the States. So, yeah. Um, the other piece of my haul, of course, was the new colours. Yay! It's already bobbinated and on. So the only thing that's in the tin now is the, the booklet that came with it. I'm not sure if I'll stitch anything from the booklet, but I had the threads. That was really important, wasn't it? Um, Christine sent me 
this one with my card my Christmas card and so I will do this and this will also become part of past the stash um, yeah so but not yet not yet because I haven't stitched it yet I got from someone in not stash unload because I got kicked out of there because I live in a ridiculous country that apparently doesn't exist in the main name of the mods so I felt I should have said, you know, just come down here, turn right at Hobbiton, and you'll find us. But I thought that might go over her head as well. Uh, Little House Needleworks. This is the summer rumper. And awesome. So obviously I'm going to have to look for winter and spring and hopefully come across them at some point because I think they would be quite cool to do. I quite like those ones. Um, from Catherine I bought this ordered this as soon as I saw it on Facebook and Instagram because I think it's gorgeous Little House Negro it's 168 so it came out last year um, and it's Bethlehem and instead of a Santa this is part of my Stitch Mania Christmas all year round and this is the piece that I'm doing and it's, it's an entire little pouch which is all cool I am using the recommended threads all classic colour works and so that's kind of hurt someone's OCD organisational skills um, and so far this month yeah I changed out the crow for a dove and I'm thinking that's not quite visible enough so I think I might do a top stitch one thread of maybe 414 Somewhere around there, 417. Something, anyway, just to grow it up. The sheep's quite visible, though. So it's quite cool. And the cradle goes in the E. So, yeah. That's, that's been that. Uh, the fabric for that was something I had in my stash. Um, Silk Weaver Old Gold Spinner 28 Count Opalescent Lagana. If you can read that. So, yeah. I was going to do it on um, a Crafty Kitten... Jurassic Sands and didn't quite like how the thing started on it. So if anyone wants some crafted kit in Jurassic Sands, it is a fat quarter of 28 count and um, yeah, I'm looking at offloading it because I don't know what I'll use it on now and someone else may as well use it. It was $40 New Zealand so um, I'd accept a little bit less than that so just let me know. Mm because it's summer and because it's stinking hot here and it's the humidity is awful here in Auckland like we've got 90 percent chance of rain um it is six o'clock in the evening full-on sun sorry discover this stuff and if you are in New Zealand or Australia you'll be able to get it really easily best stuff it's really good hot or cold really good um my other new start was um, very, very graciously loaned to me by Gail Maguire, one of the admins in um, a couple of the Mirabilia groups I belong to, and it's Fury Idol. And Moy's done this, and I've been watching his progress on Instagram for the last few months, and it's jealous as couldn't find the chart anywhere. Um, you know, it, like it's it's massive. This is my working copy. It is an A0 piece of paper. I got two done just in case I have, you know, how you get those fold lines and mm, that, that would really hurt me um, I do have the chart um, but I want to keep it as pristine as I can because it's got to go back to Gail for all the beads everything like that um, so yeah these Sistema cases um, Sistema is a New Zealand company that's been bought by Newell so you guys will be able to get these in the States they're excellent because this size uh, there's double and there's a 1.2 litre. One of my Nora projects usually fits in a 1.2 litre. Because what it has is it has a tray, which is heart depth. And as you can see, it is the perfect height for bobbins or for Mill Hill beads. They don't bend, they don't get touched or anything like that. Um, I've got my thread heaven in here, I've got a needle picker, I've got my rainbow gallery, my highlighter. Um, everything can just fit and it's neatly sorted so I can find whatever I want um, and yeah the 
containers are really good and sturdy and they stack. So anyway, this is on Country Stitch Apple Mint 28 Count Lugana. So the dye on this is a little bit lighter than if it was on linen. So that's where I'm up to. So in January, uh, yeah, January, uh, two days worth is just this wing here and filling in some gaps on Bunny. So I think it's quite cute actually. Um, I changed out the, oh, this is probably the best place to see it. So the flowers have kind of gone like a, a purple, like a wisteria type purple. Um, that is, I'll tell you right now, that is Gentle Arts Purple Iris. So that's what I've chosen for that one. Other than that, and the paints, let me find my scatter. Uh, all this will go up on my blog as a conversion later on. Um, yes. Always know what you're doing before. That's why I keep my working copies, because they also become my diary for the duration of the project. So I changed 223-963 blend, I changed it to 761. Uh, 963 I changed and then I changed it back to 963 for some reason um, 3722 I made 223 in her in her um, in the pink and through here because otherwise it just wasn't going to show up on this fabric the you know the the original lightest pink had um, this light here also had a strand of white through it as well so it's just the 819 no white in it whatsoever because it would just be too pale but other than that i think it's all right so um yeah i'm really really pleased i am doing the back stitching as i go because i think that would be a bit of a bitch actually I'm not going to be because this one i'm doing in hand so yeah so that's me um Fairy Idol will be my focus piece for February because I'm doing with Apocalypse's uh, Olympic uh, endurance stitch along um, and it uh, also fits into the fairy cell inside the Mirabilia group um, and yeah that's that's probably about it I'm not I'm trying to make 2018 not so many stitch alongs because I got such a little amount of progress out of them last year with my wrist injury and the other things that came up so I um, am endeavouring not to get there but anyway we'll see now thank you for watching thank you for my new subscribers um, please put your comments down below um, and as always I do have past the stash the requirements for this are don't mention giveaway because we all know what happens when you mention giveaway uh, you must be 18 um, and you must be a subscriber to my channel sorry um, and what I have is a little house needleworks. It's the country cottage chart number one. So well out of print. Um, and it's called The Rose in Warning. And it says, The Rose in Warning opens its bloom, scenting the garden with sweet perfume. So it's a sweet, sweet wee chart. Um, it's an original verse by Diane Williams, who designs Little House Needleworks. Um, so as you can see, I've actually done a slight conversion on here, um, converting the crescent colours through to the DMCs. Um, because if you want it, you're not obliged to use my conversion or anything like that. But I thought, wait, it's a handy thing to have written down. Um, so yeah, I've used a couple of portions of this in my Jane Austen stitch along. Uh, this this month is the last month of Sense and Sensibility. I'm about halfway through the book, done stuff all stitching. I have tiled a bathroom though, and I'm halfway through grouting a bathroom, and Jane is very good company when you are grouting, because it's hard to be bored with Jane. So yeah. Oh, and I read a very really good book, and I put a review up today on my blog, which is soscriptmuse.wordpress.com, so go and check it out. So anyway, if you would like to be in the draw for this chart, please comment with what your favourite rose is and why. Because I need some more roses in my garden and I'd like some suggestions. It'd be grand. 
And Michelle, you can comment that it is your rose, of course. Because she's so sweet. Anyway, people, have a lovely February. Bye.